Have you guys enjoyed the Christmas experience up to this point? How about those kids? How did they do, man? Wasn't that awesome? Man, that was, that was good. It's so funny when you get kids on video. I mean, you just never know what they're going to say. You never know what they're going to do. And so it's just, uh, it's just fun, and it's just uh, funny to just uh, let the kids just kind of answer some questions. And, uh, but the thing is, you also get truth out of, out of kids. I mean, they're sincere, and they just say what's on their heart and, and, and those sorts of things. So just a, just a great time. Um, how about the band, man? Didn't the band knock it out of the park? Wasn't that awesome? Good, good stuff. So yeah, this is kind of a, a hard act to follow after coming up, uh, or after the kids and the, and the band, uh, but we're going to try and we're going to do our best. Um, this morning we are uh, finishing up, we're coming to the conclusion of our It's, it's a Wonderful Life uh, series, and, um, and so there again, I want to thank you for, for being here this morning and, and joining with us. I want to thank those of you that are joining uh, with us online and, and just being a part of this uh, Christmas experience. And so here we go, all right, you ready? I want to ask you a couple, a couple questions first off, and uh, just by a show of hands, you know, just kind of raise your hand if, if this is you, but just want to ask you a few questions. How many of you just look forward, I mean, you are excited, just absolutely excited about going through life and life dealing you one pain and heartache after another? Anybody excited about that? Come on, nobody? Nobody's excited about that, Okay. Um, how many of you just can't wait, you just absolutely can't wait for your relationships to fail, for your career to fail? Anybody? Anybody? Nobody wants that either. Okay. Um, how many of you just, you look forward to it, man. I mean, you look forward day in and day out. You just can't wait to just live from paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Anybody? Or maybe that's happening right now, and you just love it. I mean, you're just like, man, this whole deal about living from paycheck to paycheck, this is the life right here. I mean, how many of you enjoy that? Any, any takers? Anybody? Paycheck to paycheck? No. Okay. All right. How, how about this? How many of you, you just can't wait to just get sick and just be just bedridden and just like have, just like contract some type of disease. I mean, cancer, AIDS, something along those lines. I mean, you just can't wait. You've been waiting to the day for the day where you just can attract or contract some type of sickness, some type of disease. Anybody that just, I mean, you're just looking forward to that. Anybody? Nobody. Okay. Well, this is what we've been looking at, haven't we? In this series, if, um, if you've missed any one of these messages, I definitely invite you to go to our website, wiredalive.com, click on media, and this series is on, uh, on our website. And here's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about that we live in a world where life is possible, but death is also possible. Where blessing is possible, but cursing is also possible. Where, where a fulfilled life is possible, but also a destructive life is possible. And so I want to go back to our, our theme verse. We've been reading this verse because I just wanted to, in this series, I've wanted to kind of hit this verse home, just kind of knock it out of the park, let you see it over and over, and hopefully it drops down inside of each one of our hearts. The title of the message is, Do Me a Solid. And some of you maybe, maybe remember that. Among many things, among other things, it means do me a favor. Do me a solid. But let's go back to the theme verse, John 10.10. 10, it says this, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. All right, Jesus is speaking here. He's saying, here's the thief's purpose. It's to steal, to kill, and destroy. He says, my purpose, though, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now, you've heard me say this throughout this series. Jesus basically lays out two things here. One thing is he's laying out a separation between himself and the thief. Now, the thief that he's talking about is Satan and his cohorts, Satan and his demons. Their idea of life for you is everything destructive, every type of sickness, every type of disease, living from paycheck to paycheck, suffering, hurting, relationships failing. All of that comes from Satan and his cohorts, all right? They want that for your life. They, wanna, they want to, to just employ that in your life. They want to do anything and use any means necessary to make sure that life for you is not satisfying, it's not successful, it's not fulfilling. So Jesus separates himself from who the thief is, and he says, my purpose, though, 
Now, he not only separates himself, but he points out very clearly. Here's the thing, man, if you don't get anything else from this series, please get this. Because Jesus says this. He says, my purpose for your life, my life, your life, every person on the face of this earth. Now, we're not just talking about Christians here. We're not just talking about somebody that has confessed Jesus as Savior and Lord of their life. We're talking about every single human being on the face of the earth. Jesus is saying, my purpose, my desire for you. You want to know what I'm passionate about? What I am passionate about is you enjoying a rich and satisfying, full and fulfilled life. That's what I have for you, Jesus said. Now, here's the thing. Because the questions that I just asked, every single one of us, maybe we were going to go to put our hands up, we were like, no, I don't want that. I don't want anything to do with living from paycheck to paycheck. I don't want anything to do with sickness or disease. In my, I, I don't want my relationships to fail. I don't want my career to fail. We don't want that. And, and we'll say that clearly, and we'll say that till we're blue in the face. But here's the, here's the problem with that. The problem with that is this, is that we we very well embrace that simply by not taking steps to inhibit it from our life. See, we may not blatantly say, hey, I want to live from paycheck to paycheck, but when we're not wise with our finances, then guess what happens? We end up living from paycheck to paycheck. Consequently, we have a nation that is just saturated, families that are saturated with debt that is just compiled in their lives, in, in, in their family. See, if we don't, we, see, we have this idea that things are just going to automatically happen. And so since I made that decision, and, and maybe you're hearing this verse this morning for the very first time, and we just get this idea like, well, if I just embrace this verse, like if I just say, okay, Jesus, that's what I want. And if we just embrace that verse, but then don't do anything with it, and more specifically, if we don't say, okay, God, what does that look like? And God, where, where, where do I get the information of what that looks like? How do, I, how do I take steps toward that? If we don't do that, then guess what? We're going to automatically travel down that road where there's going to be sickness, there's going to be disease, there's going to be lack of finances, living from paycheck to paycheck, relationships failing, one relationship after another, our career going under, our, our, uh, our job going under, our business going under, simply because we're not taking steps to move in the direction of life itself, the full and fulfilled life that Jesus has for every single one of us. Listen, guys, it, just, it doesn't happen automatically. I mean, I started going to the gym almost about a year ago. We started probably the beginning of this year, uh, Christine and I did. And don't I look good? I mean, come on. I'm sexy and I know it, all right? Settle down, settle down. I'm married. But here's the, here's the thing, is that one of the things that I learned is that this didn't just happen automatically. Like, you know, starting to build muscle and, and starting to feel a little bit better and, and losing some weight and, and those sorts of things. It didn't happen automatically. There was something that I had to do. There was, there was a change that happened into, in, in my life. Now, here's the thing, is that I could, I could very well say, well, I, I wasn't exercising before. I wasn't really, I wasn't doing anything. Well, not doing anything doesn't necessarily mean that you're not doing anything. The very fact that I wasn't exercising was hurting my body. My body over time is deteriorating. And unless I do something, unless I feed it the proper foods, and listen, I'm not a vegetarian. I have my meat, I have my cookies and, and those sorts of things. I'm just saying if I don't make decisions for my life and if you don't make decisions for your life, we could say, well, I'll just sit here and, and not do anything. The very fact that you do nothing you've made a choice. And the very fact that you're doing nothing, you're actually doing something by doing nothing. By doing nothing. By not taking steps to say, God, you said, Jesus, you said you have a full and fulfilled life. What does that look like? What does that look like for me? How do I embrace that? How do I, how do I walk in that? Now, let me just uh, back up for just a second on something that I shared last week. I believe with all my heart that so often we concentrate on the problem areas in our life, what we're struggling with, maybe addictions, whatever it may be, we concentrate on that so much so that we're not really looking for the answers, so much so that we may miss the answers. 
So much so that we're just, man, if I just, we have this determination about us, and that's great. That energy is great. Let me show you how to focus that energy in another direction that's going to bring greater benefit into your life. Because we have this determination, man, I just need to work harder to be better. I just need to work harder to be better. I just need to work harder to be better. And here's what I would say. Fall in love with Jesus. If you will fall in love with Jesus, you will fall in love with the word, the Bible that he's left for you and me. And that will bring direction into your life and into my life. And it will help us live that full and fulfilled life that Jesus points out very clearly here. Because Jesus says, here's the thief. Here's me. Here's what I want for your life. Now, it's kind of like this. It's like Jesus saying, here's what I want for your life. Here's what I desire for you. Here's what I am passionate about for you. This is what I desire. And now Jesus is saying, but now the ball's in your court. What are you going to do with it? Because I'm ready to give it to you. I'm ready to hand it over to you. I'm ready to, I'm ready to pass it along to you. I'm ready to bless you with it. But now the ball's in your court. The ball's in my court. We've got to do something about it. So there again, there has to be steps that we take. If we don't want, if we say, man, I don't want anything to do with any of those questions that Josh asked. I, I don't want anything. I don't want any of those things. Well, we've got to take steps. And the, and the very first step that we could take and continue to take is a step toward Jesus. Because Jesus is the one that has planned that wonderful life for you and I that nobody else no one else, no organization, no thing can give you except God, except Jesus Christ himself. So how do we, how do we even get this? Like, how, how, did this, how did this whole deal come about? Well, let's look at that. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, The payment for sin is death, but the gift that God freely gives is everlasting life found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, we talked about this last week as far as the payment of sin. The paycheck for sin, for working for sin, is death. I want to concentrate more on the second part since we talked about the first part last week. Notice what it says there. But the gift that God freely gives is everlasting life found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, here's the interesting thing. When we're living a sinful life, when we're living a life of, of those things that are going to end up destroying my life, when we're pursuing those things, they ultimately bring death. But here's the thing, is that I actually have to work for that stuff. I actually have to work to do bad. I have to work to be addicted. I have to work to stay addicted. I have to work to look at those videos or those pictures. I've, I've got to work to actually hurt people's feelings and, and to step on people's toes and, and to be mean and to be rude. And, and all. I've got to work at that. Now notice the second half of the verse. It says, but the gift that God freely gives, the gift that God freely gives is everlasting life found in Christ Jesus our Lord. The difference between a life of sin and the free gift that God offers us in Christ, is this one over here you have to work for? Hey, get this. This one over here you have to work for as far as sin and living a destructive life. And not only do you have to work for it, it's destroying your life. It's destroying my life. But the gift that God freely gives is everlasting life. God gives it freely. Jesus Christ gives it freely to you and to me. It's a free gift. And guess what? We don't have to work for it. It's a free gift that God hands over. It's a free gift that God gives to you and I of everlasting life. Now, where did, where did this all come from? I mean, how did this all come about? Notice this in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. It says, The virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now, here's the interesting thing. Because we just read the verse before, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life. But we get more clarification here in Matthew where it says this gift that God's talking about, this gift that Jesus is talking about, this gift that the Bible points out very clearly for you and I wasn't a thing. It wasn't even somebody else, but it was God himself. For unto us, a child is born. And, they, and the angel said that this child's name will be Emmanuel, 
Because it's God with us. See, God decided that he would come to earth as a man, and not only come to earth as a man, but come to earth as a baby first off, and grow up just like you and I would grow up. So here's the interesting thing, is you've got everlasting, everlasting life. God is saying, here's my gift to you, I freely give it. But it wasn't just that God said, well, you're going to kind of live your life, live your life day in and day out, and then eventually when you physically die, eventually when you're on your deathbed, don't you worry, because I have everlasting life for you. And, and that would be great, that would be awesome. And, and those of us that have given our lives to Christ, we have that to look forward to. But see, God didn't just stop there. God said, I'm not just looking at when your life is over. I'm looking at life right now. And so what he said is, since I'm looking at life right now, I'm not just going to toss a gift of a fulfilled life right now and everlasting life. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going I'm to one-up that. Actually, I'm going to bunch of, up, up it. I'm going to give you myself. I'm going to come to this earth and not just walk this earth, but I'm going to be with you from that moment forward. I'm going to be with you until, until the end of time. And then when your life is over, I'm going to be with you after that as we fully step into eternity. But here was the promise. I mean, everlasting life. I mean, think about that for a moment. Would everlasting life be enough? I know for me it would be. Like to know that I'm going to spend eternity with God in paradise, in a place where there is no more sickness, no more disease, no more hurt, no more pain, rather than eternal damnation where there is all of those things. Just to know that I have eternal life, man, that's great. God, I remember the day when I dedicated my life to the Lord. It wasn't the day that I got saved, but it was the day that I rededicated my life back to God. And, and I remember just telling God, Lord, if you never, Jesus, if you never speak a word to me ever again, if you never do anything else good in my life, if you never do anything else for me, to know that I will spend eternity with you is enough. But the fact of the matter is, is he didn't stop there. God didn't stop there. See, we've heard this phrase before, right? The gift that keeps on giving. Here's the gift that truly keeps on giving. A great gift, the greatest gift that was ever given to the world. Let's look at how this came about. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. It says, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee. The angel went to a virgin promised in marriage to a descendant of David named Joseph. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel entered her home, he greeted her and said, You are favored by the Lord. The Lord is with you. She was startled by what the angel said and tried to figure out what this greeting meant. Now, this is being a little bit too nice, okay? I mean, think about if an angel walked up inside your, your bedroom or inside your house, okay? This, this word startled is actually the word freaking out. Mary is freaking out. She's like, what in the world is this? What in the world? And Mary is actually, she's a teenager at this time. Okay, that's how old she is. She's somewhere 14, 13, 14, 15. She's a teenager. And this whoever busts up inside just kind of appears. And she's just freaking out. In fact, it doesn't say this. But if you, if you look at, uh, if you look at uh, what scholars have, have talked about relating to this verse, Mary actually picked up a frying pan and tried to hit the angel with it, but it went through him. And so, you know, she's just like, what, what, is, what is this? What's going on? For those of you that didn't get it, I'm, I'm just kidding. That didn't really happen. But, but I mean, imagine if that was you. Would you pick up a frying pan? I mean, I'd pick up my shotgun. You know, what in the world, what, what are you, what, what are you? And so Mary is just, I mean, she's not just, oh, an angel. What are you doing here? <laughs> you know, that's what you get from the word startled. You're just kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know, she wasn't like tripping out or anything. No, she was tripping out. She thought she was seeing things. She's freaking out. She's wondering if she's going crazy. And so notice that after she swings the frying pan and totally misses the angel... <laughs> Notice this in verse 30, because the, I mean, she had to do something. The angel responded to her. He's like, the angel told her, don't be afraid, Mary. He's like, don't even bother. I mean, you're just, you're swinging that air here. You know, don't even bother. Don't be afraid, Mary. Notice what he says. You have found favor with God. 
You will become pregnant, give birth to a son, and name him Jesus. Verse 32. He will be a great man and will be called the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. Your son will be king of Jacob's people forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, how can this be? I've never had sexual intercourse. The angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come to you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the holy child developing inside of you will be called the Son of God. Elizabeth, your relative, is six months pregnant with a son in her old age. People said she couldn't have a child, but nothing is impossible for God. Mary answered, Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. Let everything you've said happen to me. Then the angel left her. So you kind of get the picture of the situation. I mean, Mary is absolutely freaking out. She's tripping out. I mean, think if you were in that situation. You might be freaking out just by the very fact that you found out that you're pregnant with God and you didn't get to enjoy sex. (laughs) It's like, what's up with this? I mean, we skipped that whole part of, I mean, what happened? So you, you might be freaking out just at that point. Like, man, you know, who, you know, maybe the angel showed up and you're like, what's up? What you got for me? Well, you're pregnant right now with a, with a baby. What? I didn't even have sex. I didn't even get to enjoy that. What's going on? What's up with that? So Mary is just totally freaking out, just like you and I would be freaking out, just like you and I would be tripping out. She's freaking out here. But she gets some information, and twice the angel tells her, he says, Mary, you're favored. You're favored. I want to do you a favor, Mary. I want to I share with you something that is precious, something that is important, something that is vital, something that is absolutely so cool. God has never done this before. Mary, you are favored. Now, here's the thing, is Mary didn't do much of anything. Like I said, she's a young girl at this time. She's a teenager. She's got a long life to live. She's got many years left. She hasn't really done anything up to this point to really earn God's favor. There's really nothing that Mary has done other than the fact that God just, through his messenger, through his angel, Gabriel said, Mary, your favor. Why was it Have you ever wondered that? Like, why was it that Mary was highly favored? Why was it that God looked at her and said, man, she's precious. There's something about her. There's something good about her. There's something that I want to do. Mary didn't do anything special. Mary is just an average woman, an average human being, just like you and me, that God decided he would do something extraordinary through. And the reason why I point that out is because there's a bunch of Marys in here this morning. And there's a bunch of Joes in here, average Joes. Every single one of us are regular, ordinary people, but God wants to do something extraordinary through every single one of us. In fact, it wasn't that God just highly favored Mary. Actually, God highly favored every single person through Mary. Let me show you that. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says, she will give birth to a son, And you will name him Jesus, which means he saves, because he will save his people from their sins. See, through Mary, God favored every single one of you, myself, every single person on the face of this earth, every person that came before us, every person living today, every person after us, every man, every woman, every boy, every child. Jesus, God, favors everybody. Why? Why? Is there something that we've done to earn God's favor? Is, is, is there a life that we've lived that God said, oh, now, now you have my favor. Now I'll do a favor for you. Now I'll do something special for you. No. You know why God favors you and I? Because he can. Because he has the right to. Because he's God. Because he's the creator of everything. He can make the choice and favor whoever he wants on this earth. In fact, the Bible tells us this in the Old Testament. I think it's in uh, Psalms. But the Bible tells us this. It says that God's looking all over the face of the earth. All over. Looking for somebody he can show himself faithful in. God wants to show his favor in your life and through your life. In my life and through my life. In every single person. See, it wasn't just, it wasn't just everlasting life, although that would be enough. 
But God said, I'm going to give you myself. And in God giving us himself, it was the gift that just keeps on giving. It was the gift that annihilated sin in your life and in my life and in everybody, every, everybody's life on the face of this earth. It was, it was the, the gift that not only annihilated, but allowed us to have victory over a sinful life, over a destructive life that Satan and his demons want for us. It's the gift that, uh, that offers you a new life here on this earth. It's not just, okay, well, you just kind of live your life and it's going to be rough, and, but hey, you got an eternal life to look. No, it's a gift that gives you a brand new life right now that you could live a full and fulfilled life. It's the gift that after you and I pass on that we've got eternal life. We've got life more to look after. It's that perpetual life that keeps going here on earth that is full and fun and fulfilled. But then also when we die, it, keep, it keeps on perpetuating. It keeps going on and on forever. You and I cannot imagine what forever looks like because after we've been living for a thousand years, after we've been living for a thousand years, we look on the radar and it doesn't even show up on the radar screen. Because forever, well, it's forever. It's the gift that keeps on giving, that gives you the spirit of God to help you live, live out that life that God has for you and I, that promise that God has for you and I. It's the gift, friends. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from your God, from your creator, your Lord, Jesus Christ, because he gave himself. When you and I couldn't do anything for ourselves to save ourselves, get rid of our sin, live that full and fulfilled life, God, Jesus, did it for us and took our place, took the punishment for us in our place. Now, here's the question that I, that I want to ask. Is why is it then, why is it then that so many people don't live out this wonderful life that God has for all of us? Why is it that we miss it? Why is it that we don't get to enjoy that wonderful life that Jesus paid for us to have? And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we lack faith, and then we don't really trust God with our life. I mean, please, can we be honest? Can we be honest this morning? Do we really trust God with our life? And when I say our life, do, do we really trust God with every area of our life? Like, do we really, really trust him? Or do we say that we trust him? Do we have this mental ascent of trust toward him? But do we really trust him? Because quite honestly, I think we live in a nation and in a world of, in God we don't trust. In God we really don't believe that he really has this life that he says he has for us. That what Jesus was actually saying back in John 10, 10, differentiating himself between the thief and, and himself, that what he was saying is, I promise I, I, I've got a rich and satisfying life to you, that he was just kind of, he was just kind of making us feel good. I don't know that I could really believe that. I don't know that I could really trust him in that. You know, I think Jesus was just kind of just kind of sharing some words of encouragement. He was just trying to just trying to appease us, just trying to make us feel good. Was he? Or was he true to what he was saying? Was he speaking truth? Was he speaking life for every single one of us? And I believe with all my heart that he was speaking life for every single, every single one of us. I mean, why in the world? I mean, here's Jesus. He's on the earth. God in human form. He's on the earth. Why in the world would he leave heaven where there's no garbage, where there's no pain, where there's no hurt, where there's no sickness, disease? Why would he leave his kingdom, his throne, to come to this earth where all of those things are on the earth? Why would he do that? I mean, just to go back again? So there's got to be something to the words that he speaks over your life and over my life. And we're just looking at the one verse in John 10.10. 10. And so I believe that God is trustworthy. I believe that we can believe Jesus. I believe all that. But here's the thing. We struggle with it. 
Do we really trust him? Can we really honestly say that we trust him? See, if there's anything, if there's anything that Mary did to deserve favor, it was the fact that she put stock in, she put faith and trusted what the angel said, what God spoke through the angel, she trusted. Remember what she came to the end of it after being freaked out, trying to throw a frying pan and all of that stuff? Finally, at the end of it, she said, all right, what you've said, let it happen to me. Let it happen to me. See, and here's what I love about this story. What I love is that Mary is just as real as you and I. You know why? She asked a question. Did you notice that? I mean, did you pick up on that? Mary said, well, how can this be? See, sometimes people will get this, and, and let me just squash somebody's theology here for just, well, not just a moment, forever. Here it is. See, we get this idea that we can't ask God questions. I mean, maybe you grew up with this, with this idea, with this ideology. Oh, no, you don't question God. You just take what God says and you just do it. You don't ever question God. Well, God gave Mary favor, and she said, how could this be? And you're going to tell me you don't question God? Mary questioned God, and guess what? God still had favor on her. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, still came through her womb. So here's the point that I want to make with that is this is that you may be wrestling with, well, I don't know if I could trust God. I don't know if I could believe everything. And here's what I would say. I would say, that's fine. God will work with you right where you're at. See, God met Mary right where she was. This teenage girl that just kind of, she's real, real, she's open, just like you and I. And she says, well, how could this, how could this be? How's this going to happen? What's going to take place? What's your plan? See, faith is not blind. It's not blind. It's not, well, I'm just going to kind of keep walking. I hope I don't walk off a stage, a cliff. It's not, blind. it's not blind. God is not asking you to just take a blind step. No, what God is saying is, here, I've got some information I want to give you for your life in the Bible. I've got some information. And here's what God's going to do, is God's going to meet you right where you're at. And little by little, God's going to prove himself to you. In fact, there's a situation where Jesus is uh, 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 getting ready to heal a father's son. And he tells the father, with God, everything is possible. And the, and the father says, well, he says, uh, with God, everything is possible if you believe. And immediately the father spoke up and he says, I, I, I believe, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. I believe what you're saying, Jesus. I believe that you can, you can heal my son, but, but there's still something I'm wrestling with inside. There's still a lack of faith. There's still some unbelief. There's still a little bit of doubt. I, I believe, but can you help me where I struggle? And you know what Jesus did? Jesus walked away from the guy and said, hey, you got to have stronger faith than that. No, he didn't. He looked at the guy's son, touched him, and he was healed. Why? Because Jesus will meet you right where you're at. So maybe, maybe you don't totally believe. Maybe you don't totally trust. Maybe you have some doubts. I would say that that's okay. What I would say is not okay is just saying, well, now nah, there's no way that that could happen. And just totally walk away from it. Because here's what I believe, is God has proven himself. He's proven himself over and over. In fact, Jesus said it this way. He said, if you had faith, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you know what a mustard seed looks like? It's a very tiny seed. Jesus said, if you have faith just the size of a mustard seed, you could speak to this mountain and tell it to move from here to there, and it'll move. You could speak to that mountain in your life. You could speak to that situation. You could speak God's word, his direction for your life. You could speak to it and expect something to happen, something good to happen in your life simply because you're trusting. Faith, just the size of a mustard seed. And you're going to tell me that God won't work with it? Absolutely he will. Jesus will absolutely work with it. So where are you right now? See, do you trust? Do you really trust God? 
And like I said, maybe there's something that you're struggling with. That's fine. But can you take another step of saying, God, I trust you. I trust what you want for my life. I can't see it. I can't see it all coming to pass. I don't, I don't know how you're going to do it, God. God, I, I, Jesus, I don't know how you're going to repair my marriage. I can't see it. I, I, I have my doubts. But you know, I, I'm going to take this step of faith. You know, Jesus, I, I don't know how you're going to turn my business around. I don't know how you're going to do it. I can't see it. But I tell you what, I'll take you at your word. I'll take you at your word, what, you, what you're saying. And even though I have some doubts, even though I have some reservation, Jesus, I don't know how you're going to repair my relationships with friends and family members. I don't know how you're going to do it. I can't see it. I have some reservation. But you know what? I'm going to take a step. I'm going to take a step of faith. I'm going to take a step toward you and your plan for my life. Jesus, I don't know how you're going to turn around my finances. I've gotten myself in a mess. I don't know how you're going to, I don't know how you're going to deliver me from this horrible addiction that I have. I can't see it. I have some reservation. But you know what? I'm going to take a step of faith. And that's all I'm asking you this morning to do. And more importantly than that, that's all Jesus is asking. Do you have faith just the size of a mustard seed? Do you have maybe some doubt, some reservation, a lack of trust? That's okay. Are you willing to take a step toward him? Maybe you don't know. You, maybe this is all brand new to you. And you just don't know. I mean, is this God even real? Is Jesus even real? The Bible even true? I mean, maybe you just don't know. Here's what I would ask. Will you just take a step? Just take a step of faith. The question that I want to close up with, where do I? I've got to make this personal. You make it personal. Where do I need help with faith and trust so I can live the wonderful life Jesus freely gives me? Where do I need help? I mean, you look at your life just like I got to look at mine. Where is it that I might be wrestling, maybe wrestling with what God is saying about my life or a certain area of my life? Again, maybe I have some reservation, some doubt, a lack of faith. Or maybe I'm just like totally on the other side of the spectrum and I just don't believe this stuff whatsoever. Where do you need help? Because right now, right where you are, I believe that Jesus wants to lend that healthy hand because he's got a wonderful, rich, satisfying life for you if you'll just take the next step. Remember I said earlier, the ball's now in our court. He said, here's what I'm passionate about. Here's what I want for you. Now the ball's in my court. It's in your court. What are we gonna do with it? So close your eyes with me for just a moment. And let me just ask you again to just ponder, think about that question. Think about this question. Where do I need help with faith and trust so I could live the wonderful life that Jesus freely gives me? And right now, right where, right where you're at, seated right where you are, you've heard the message that the Lord has shared through me this morning. You've heard this message loud and clear. And here's what I want to ask you to do. I want to ask you to think about what you've heard and to respond to it. And here's, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do. Right where you're at, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm not going to do any of those things. All I'm going to ask you to do is lift up, lift up, your, lift up your hand. If you've heard the message this morning and you're ready to respond in whatever capacity that might be for you right where you're at, Jesus wants to meet you right where you're at. The other thing is this, I want to ask another question, and, and maybe somebody is here this morning and you say, Josh, I've never, I've never heard about this Jesus, but I am ready. I am ready. I hear this good news. I hear what you're sharing with me, that Jesus came to this earth, that he died on a cross for my sin, that he was the baby that was born in a manger. He lived a perfect life, and he went to that cross for my sin. Josh, I want that Jesus. And the Bible says this, all we have to do is believe in our heart and say with our mouth, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sin. I embrace you as the Lord and Savior of my life. And the Bible says that you are saved. That's it. 
So on both those questions, here what I, here's what I want to ask you to, to raise, your, raise your hand to. Do you, would you respond to the message that you've, that you've heard this morning? If you're here this morning and you're ready to respond to the message, or you're here this morning and you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, can you just slip your hand up? I just want to acknowledge you where you're at. I see that one in the left. I see it right here in the middle. I see it on the, on the right, right side over here. You can put your hand down after I see it. I see the, in the back left over there. Thank you. Anybody else, you say, Josh, I'm ready. I want Jesus. I see that hand in the back. Anybody else? You say, I have some reservation. I, I've got some trust issues, but I'm ready to take a step. Anybody else? You're ready to respond. Anybody else, you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time? All right, those four people right where you're at. And if you didn't raise your hand, you can pray this prayer right where you are. Pray this prayer with me, right there, right where you're seated, under your breath. Jesus hears your voice. He hears your sincerity. Just repeat this after me. God, right now, I thank you that you so loved me that you gave your life so that I could have life. Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross and annihilating sin in my life. I thank you, Jesus, for a new life. And right now, Jesus, I confess you as Savior and Lord of my life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I embrace the new life that you have for me. Open up the Bible to me. Give me your word. Give me your instruction to change my life and transform it. God, I ask, I ask you right now to give me your spirit to lead me each and every day in this rich and satisfying life that you have for me. Thank you, Jesus. I give you all the praise and the glory. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we welcome those that have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord this morning? Amen.